Hello? Yes, that's the, that's the cabin behind me. I'm gonna try to make this pretty quick because, hold on a second, let me see if I can do this. Because I don't, I don't know how long I'm gonna be able to hold the camera like this. So I thought today I'd talk a bit about inspiration. I'd do a short kind of coffee chat about what inspires your creativity. So what inspires your creativity? Sometimes I think we need a boost when it comes to our creativity. For whatever reason, sometimes we could use a boost. I think that that's because creativity needs to be fed. It needs to be nurtured. And it doesn't always happen in the studio, in your room, at your desk. It actually happens in life, during life, during the moments of life. When we take a walk, when we read a book, when we watch a movie, when we look at pictures, um, it comes from a variety of sources. And if you don't feed your creativity or you aren't feeding your creativity with um, maybe the right things at the right time and that can change, then sometimes maybe we can get a little stagnant or sometimes we can get blocked. For a good while, I felt like I had lost my art artistic voice had no idea of what I was doing really. I knew I wasn't happy with what I was doing. I wanted a real style. Um, I know other people think I have a style, but that's not, I mean, it is and it isn't. Like, I want more than that. I'm trying to make sure that gnats don't get in my coffee. <laughs> I should have brought the coffee cup with the lid. So anyway, um, and it seemed like no matter how hard I tried, I could not, I just wasn't really art journaling. Not like I had been. Um, I, I wasn't doing it on a daily basis. I felt a bit lost. So I thought, okay, well maybe if I change things up. So I was doing more like the planning, more regular text journaling. I did some things. I did more collaging. So I quit trying so hard. That helped a bit. I started worrying more about what I was doing rather than what I couldn't do, what I couldn't seem to do. So I started concentrating on what I was doing and I added more photos to my journal pages, like I said, more collage bits. And then I, I gradually got back into adding art to my journal pages. Art should be fun, at least for me. It should be playtime. It's me time. It's meditative. It's something i i do and i get in the zone and it makes me feel oh man it makes me feel so relaxed and so happy that's how i wanted to feel again and the more i did it in stages sorry the more that i did it in stages the more that it started to happen a little bit more and a little bit more i began experimenting more i mean art is Creativity is definitely an experimental outlet. And I found that the more creative I was in other aspects, the more art I wanted to do. The more I wanted to try a little bit more, a little bit more, and I started doing it in bits and pieces. One of the things, one of the big things that I can suggest, if you are feeling a bit, let's say creatively under the weather, <laughs> take a walk. That actually has been known to increase creativity. Studies have found. Look at what's around you, explore. Look at the colors of the leaves, at the texture of the uh, trees, the, the branches. Look at, let's, let's turn the camera around. So, the texture of the branches. The colors. That is not all solid brown. The grass, something that makes you feel good. Let's see if I can find a leaf. Our leaves are starting to turn. These are, are, are not very good. This is why we want to get rid of these trees. This is our barn pile and look, so look at all the different things in there. So take a look around you. Look at the texture of this stump. I have actually drawn this stump. This 
sky. Look at the sky. There's a bird up there. I don't know if you can see it. But I see a bird. Like hear that? Wind rustling through the leaves. What inspires you? Why? The moment that we really started planning this cabin, I started getting like super inspired creatively, but it wasn't art so much. But then the more inspired I got with, in regards to the creativity, the more that I realized what it was really about. I, it was create. I had all this inspiration, all this motivation why? Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you why. When I first started thinking about a, ca a creative cabin, it was a writing cave, actually. That's what I originally thought. I'd have a writing cave. I'd have my very own little writing space. But the more that I got into to art, more... Um, I realized I needed a completely creative space. I needed a little area where I could have my bookcases and a chair, maybe a little ottoman, and I could relax, sit, read, journal. Um, I have one computer. My Windows computer is now turned into my writing computer because... And then I also, like, I was, okay, what can I do? Um, what what do I need to do and it just was it was amazing when I David and I started measuring the furniture we started measuring the walls in here and I was on Pinterest I've been on Pinterest and then I started thinking about you know what I could make art for my walls there's all these different things that I could do possibilities are limitless so you don't necessarily have to have a cabin to feel inspired or to be working on uh, a she shed <laughs> to be inspired but I will say that if you find yourself with a project that truly just makes you feel excited about it that you want to jump up and down with joy you're so excited about it um, that would be the thing to work on um, if you want to work with your children if, if the idea of making little splotches with fingerprints of, of finger paint or if let's say you wanted to give them a paintbrush and do um, some splotches let's say you wanted to give them some colored pencils or, whoa, are some crayons. If you want to give them some colored pencils or some crayons and let them have just a blast, do a few prompts. Um, draw some faces, draw some trees, draw some houses, draw some birds. Um, you could go through the alphabet, apples, A, apples, B, birds. Just like when they're learning the alphabet and actually would help them if they're learning the alphabet. There's all different kinds of things, but I found that the more that you can play, the more creative you can be. But one of the big, big things that deters creativity is comparison. Comparison is the thief of joy. It's the thief of creativity. And what inspires me to be creative may be completely different than what inspires you to be creative. But if I only go by what somebody else is doing, I'm doing myself a big injustice. There's a quote, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. We're not all fish, we're not all trees, we're individuals, and what works for one person may not necessarily work for another person. But I do firmly believe that we have to, fruit, free, blah, 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 we have to feed our creativity. We have to nurture it, and I found that Sometimes I get the best creative ideas in the shower. 
Now, when I lost my art mojo, it was different than losing my creative mojo. I was still being creative. And it was that creativity that helped me get back into the art mojo. And I realized maybe it's time to expand my horizons and learn different things, learn more, get better at drawing itself. I'm practicing watercolor and I'm taking a watercolor class by Alyssa Burke and I'm one by Eric Landreth. So completely different kinds of watercolor classes. But I've also got a, a book, a great book about how to draw like ink sketches and stuff like that and I want to get better at that. One of the other things I've noticed is that I've gone back to adding little bits, little bits of art on the page in my bullet journal. I'll take a picture of, of uh, yesterday and today's pages and let you see them. Um, but it's, it's, it's more than, it's more than just refilling the well. I think more than just refilling our creative well, we have to refill our own personal wells. If you don't get enough sleep, if you don't get enough to eat, if you don't um, take care of yourself, you're not going to have enough you to do all of the things that you really want to do. Especially not if, if your creative time is extra. You know, I mean, if you're busy with your work stuff and your house stuff and your family stuff, I've found that what I've started doing is changing things up and in the mornings, I spend an hour of me time doing something that inspires my creativity. Whether it's looking through a book at pictures or reading a book or watching a video or listening to a podcast or listening to an audiobook, any, all different kinds of things. I spend that one hour in the mornings drinking my coffee and with my journal in hand, sometimes I'm taking notes Sometimes I'm just journaling. Sometimes I'm reading a book. Um, my journal will sit beside me in case I want to write down a note from the book or I'm listening to a book while I draw or I'm watching a video and I'm planning my morning. Um, but I spend that one hour in the mornings now and I used to not take that time. Like I wanted to get up, get dressed, brush my teeth, make the coffee and immediately start working on like morning pages or or editing a video or filming a video or something like that. I don't do that anymore. For the last couple of months since I started having all the issues, I've spent that one hour of me time. In the beginning, I couldn't, I wasn't drawing at all during that one hour. A lot of times, I think I was pressuring myself so much, like I would watch people drawing, uh, videos about people drawing, and then that just kind of made it worse because then I started beating myself up because I couldn't. So then I switched it around and went to other kinds of things. I went to planning videos and I went to true crime podcast, true crime videos on YouTube, or I started reading books um, just for fun, fiction or nonfiction. I also, I changed up, like I don't do the same thing every morning. Some mornings it's a book I either read or listen to. Some mornings it's a podcast, some mornings it's a video. I no longer get up first thing in the morning and I'm listening to the news while I'm making coffee and getting ready. It just the news got too depressing. I do watch the news in the evenings, about 20 or 30 minutes to catch up on things. And I watch Philip DeFranco <laughs> so, at least once or twice a week. But that's about it. I just wanted to share a little bit with you. The barn, the electrician didn't make it this past weekend. He will be here this weekend. Whether he'll get it all done in one weekend or not, I don't know. So anyway, I, I know this is sort of an impromptu coffee chat vlog kind of thing. I'm not going to be drinking my coffee because unfortunately a fly and a gnat got in it and it I, I just poured it out. I'm going to go make a fresh cup of coffee, rinse my cup out really good, wash it, make me a fresh cup of coffee and uh, I'll be drinking that while I edit this and try to get it up. I've got quite a few videos coming. I'm going to be scheduling to go up. I don't know that I'll be doing a live this week at all, but I, there are more videos to come. There are more videos to come. And uh, I thank you so much for being here, and I appreciate it. Have a great one. Bye, y'all. Mm -hmm.